there will be eight questions about the ignition system on the test. There's two main types of ignition systems. This video is going to focus on the distributor ignition system. For this one to work, you need a triggering device and an ignition control module. The trigger is usually a crankshaft position sensor. Sometimes a camshaft position sensor is also used. This system will not start without the crankshaft position sensor. You will have a no start condition, but it can start without the camshaft position sensor. It will start with poor engine performance. The trigger sends a timing signal to the ignition control module. The timing signal being piston position. At the right time, the ICM ignition control module will provide ground to the coil to complete the circuit and saturate the primary windings. The positive side of the coil is connected to the ignition switch, then to the battery. The ignition coil is hot in run and start positions. This means that the ignition coil is always receiving power when the ignition switch is on. Now, the amount of time the ignition coil is turned on is called what? The ignition coil is given enough time to saturate. Then, the ignition control module opens the circuit, it cuts off the ground connection to the coil, and through magnetic induction, 12 volts are changed to 10,000 or up to 60,000 volts. What you see here is the primary circuit alongside the battery and the PCM. The secondary circuit is used to deliver the high voltage into the combustion chamber. That's high voltage, not high amperage. Amperage remains low. The secondary circuit consists of the ignition coil, distributor cap, distributor rotor, and the spark plug with all the appropriate wiring. This is your basic distributor ignition setup. After the engine has started, the PCM modifies the ground time the ICM supplies to the ignition coil. This is for spark advance and spark retardation. Generally speaking, timing is advanced more as engine RPMs increase and timing is delayed under heavy engine load. Timing that is too advanced will cause detonation and timing that is too delayed will result in a lack of power. Now, which of the following sensor inputs is least likely to be used in calculating spark advance or spark delay? You will not be tested on how to set base timing. It is not on the task list. You should be more concerned with diagnosing problems in the primary and secondary circuits. First, any unwanted resistance in the primary circuit will lower the high voltage in the secondary. For example, corrosion on the ignition coil's terminals. One volt of unwanted voltage drop can potentially lower secondary high voltage by as much as 10,000 volts. High resistance in the secondary circuit can lead to ignition coil failure. To make up for the unwanted resistance, the coil could build up a higher voltage and continually building up this higher voltage will cause it to overheat and eventually fail. When diagnosing a no start, the first test after a visual inspection is to check the ground signal to the coil during cranking. Connect the test light to the battery positive and back probe the ground connection at the coil. In this example, the connector is disconnected and the test light's probe is carefully inserted into the connector at the ground wire end. The test light should flicker as the engine is cranked using the ignition switch. The next test is to check for spark after the coil. Here a spark tester is connected to the wire after the ignition coil, the other end to ground. The gap on the tester is set to 20,000 volts, meaning the coil has to generate that much high voltage to jump the gap. The engine is cranked using the ignition switch. The next test for spark are at the spark plug wire ends. Be very careful when checking for spark in this end 
if you don't use a spark tester or properly ground the disconnected end, very high voltage could build inside the coil and break from the side of the case. This is called internal tracking and can cause the coil to fail. You can check the resistance of the coil's primary windings using a digital multimeter set to ohms. The specification for this coil is between 0.2 and 0.5 ohms. The secondary windings can also be checked. The specification for this coil is between 5,000 and 25,000 ohms. Now you can check for leakage against the case like this. It should be open. If you're reading resistance, you must replace the coil. Here I'm checking the distributor cap for continuity. This one has continuity. This one has not. Go back to the first one. The ignition control module can fail if it's overheated. If it's loose on its mounting bracket, it can overheat. If no silicone grease is added to the back of it during installation, it can overheat and prematurely fail. I did not talk about available voltage, reserve voltage, or required voltage. I really don't expect to see them on the test. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for video number two where we will talk about electronic ignition systems.